Uh, it, it points up something I said all the time with Tate's Creek and Lafayette and Henry Clay winning. There are no cotton candy here in Lexington. These people have to learn that. There's basketball around here and good basketball. We were certainly tested tonight because uh, Kaywood was an outstanding basketball team. They were coached by an outstanding young man. They were well prepared, and they took us to the task. They played hard, and a lot of good things are going to happen for Kaywood's team because they play hard and they play good basketball. What about your team? What did you learn from this tournament? Well, I thought we played beautifully in our first two basketball games, as well as any Henry Clay team I've seen in many years. But we came out here tonight against a well-prepared team that took us to the hilt. And we hung on, and I think that's the important thing right now. We hung on and, and got the FCIT. Two clubs met twice during the regular season, Henry Clay winning 85-68 in the Fayette County Invitational, 
and Lafayette winning 44-43 later in the year. But what will be the key tomorrow night? I think that we have to take uh, a couple of their better players out of the game and, and Butcher and Sanford. I think we have to uh, limit their scoring potential and, and play strong defense and control the boards. If we do that, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. It's going to be quite a chore for us. If there's any one or two things probably we're going to have to do is probably we're going to have to control the tempo. I don't think you can run with Henry Clay and beat them. I don't think there's any way. The two losses that they've had, one to Owensboro and one to us, was uh, both of those games were in the 40s. So that tells me something. Both clubs come into the game with almost identical records. Henry Clay has a 23-2 slate on the year, while Lafayette stands at 22-4. And, and despite the fact both teams are ranked in the state's top 10, the season will end for the loser of tomorrow's contest. I hate to see either of those teams lose, to be honest with you, because they're both very deserving and very... Uh, both of them should be in a regional tournament or a state tournament somewhere down the line, but only one of us can go. Dave Baker, New Center 27. George Orwell once said, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. In no place in the topsy-turvy world of Kentucky high school basketball is that any truer than in Lexington's 43rd district. I don't think there's any question it's the toughest district in the state. You've got uh, three teams that were ranked in the, in the Licking House ratings today. Uh, three of the teams were ranked in the top 10, and, and the other team was ranked, I think, 12. So, you know, it's just an unbelievable district. Unbelievable indeed. Henry Clay with a record of 23-2 and two and Lafayette coming in at 22-4. and four. And after tomorrow night's first round game in the 43rd, one of those clubs will be eliminated. Uh, I hate to see either of those teams lose, to be honest with you, because they're both very deserving and very... Uh, both of them should be in a regional tournament or a uh, state tournament somewhere down the line, but only one of us can go. The two teams have met twice this year, Henry Clay winning 85-68 to in the Fayette County Invitational, and Lafayette winning 44 to 43 later in the year. But what will be the key tomorrow night? I think that we have to take uh, a couple of their better players out of the game and, and Butcher and Sanford. I think we have to uh, limit their scoring potential and, and play strong defense and control the boards. If we do that, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. The saddest part about the contest, though, is that only one club will finish the game in good shape. Dave Baker, New Center 27. similar ball club. I think uh, both teams like to run. I think that Lafayette probably will try to tempo the game a little more than we will. I think they'll try to shut off our inside game of Miller and Bates and uh, try to reduce us to a perimeter shooting team and you know we haven't been that good from the perimeter this year so that may be a factor in the ball game. Who would have ever believed the way this one started? Late in the first quarter Lafayette's Vince Sanford gets the jam 16-8 Generals, Don Harville's club led 20-8 at the end of one period. But the state's second-ranked club staged a furious comeback. Greg Bates with a thunderous stuff, tying it at 26-all late in the first half. Jeff Blandon then capped a streak that saw the Blue Devils outscore Lafayette 24-4 with two free throws, and Al Pruitt's club took a 28-26 lead into the locker room in intermission. Henry Clay then put its fast break to work in the third period. Roy Moment takes the outlet and feeds to Bates for the three-point play. 50 to 41 Blue Devils at the end of three. But with just a minute 50 left in the game, Lafayette's James Burdett gets the steal and lays it in to tie it at 57 all. But on the very next trip down the floor, Bates gets the turnaround to put Henry Clay up 59-57. Jeff Blandon then added three free throws down the stretch to give Henry Clay the win, 62 to 57. I'm telling you, I'm extremely proud of this basketball team. We were down early. The ball would not go in the basket. We had good shots, and the shots wouldn't drop. We set a timeout when we were down 12. If you just keep your head up, if you work hard, the ball is going to go in the basket. Don't get your dauber down. They didn't. We just scrapped and fought our way back in the game, and I thought we had some chance of winning at the end, and some things happened to us down in there that just uh, didn't go our way. And uh, We just have to take those things. That's all we can do.
Madison Central has a nice basketball team. I don't think there's any question about that. And they played well this year. I, I thought we took them out of their game. I thought our defense has confused them a little bit. And then we hit the basket awful well the first half, which gave us a pretty good cushion. From there on in, I think it was just a matter of, of playing hard and keeping our head up, which I thought we did. I did not think the, the ball fell for us in the second half. However, I felt like we played good defense and, and, and kept them pretty well in tow. Tonight's game was almost a carbon copy of the 43rd District Final. Henry Clay up court quickly to Steve Miller for the jam. The Devils led it 20 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. But in the second, Tate's Creek rallied behind Stephon Bishop. Bishop with the turnaround, he led the Commodores with 23 and it was knotted at 30 all at the break. In the second half though, Henry Clay's inside power proved to be too much. Greg Bates with a sensational tap off the lob, he led the Devils with 25. And then for some icing on the cake, Warfield throws it down off the break. Henry Clay wins it 68-61 and moves on to the Sweet 16. I felt like if we had our people in the basketball game, that we were a better team. Tate's Creek is a good basketball team. We beat them previously twice. We feel like we were a better team. And we're tickled to death to have a chance to represent this region in the state tournament next week. We, we feel like we can do it adequately. We played them tough, I thought, for the most part. We, we had our chances and just couldn't make the ball go down. Uh, so I, I don't know what else you say. This is our third time in the finals of the region, and we've, we've lost each of the times by about six points every time. So it, it's a little discouraging and disappointing, but uh, in reality, they've got an outstanding team. I think it's really one of the most mature teams that we've had. They they play businesslike and they're they're very uh, they're really an intelligent team. They try to do the right things. They work hard, and I think the thing that really characterizes them is the fact that they go on the floor each night with a with a pretty good business uh, attitude. And I think that's important. I think the thing that we really have to do is to continue the way we played in the regional and in the district. And we played with a real business attitude in both those tournaments. We're not a big team. We're a good jumping team. I think we're good leapers. But we're really not a big team. Uh, we go 6'6 six, six or 6'5 six, and a half in the middle. It's going to have to try to guard a 6'10 guy, and that could pose some problems. I wouldn't foresee it posing a great many problems on the board because we're good leapers. I think from a defensive standpoint, it's going to pose some problems for us. But we know that Greenup County is an excellent basketball team because we know the 16th region has good strength. We've seen Greenup play, and uh, the thing that I think we have to do with them is the thing you're talking about. We're going to have to neutralize their size, and we're going to have to block out on the boards, and we're going to have to put the clamps on Boo Williams. He's a real good basketball player. Well, there's always nerves. Yeah, I think you have butterflies. We certainly like to win it. We like to win it here in Lexington. You know, I've never taken a team to the state tournament when it's been in Lexington. We've always been down in Louisville, and I don't know whether this, this will certainly be a different experience for us. We're finding right now that the routine is different, so hopefully that will favor us a little bit. I, I've always said that the pavement wears out more teams than uh, the tournament does, and that is getting around the motel and this type of thing. So maybe being at home might be a good omen for us. We're hoping so. Despite the fact the Musketeers came out in green on St. Patty's Day, their luck was mostly bad. Robert Warfield with a jumper and Henry Clay had jumped out to a quick 14-2 lead. They led it 16-10 after the first frame. But Greenham County wouldn't lie down. Mike Scott gets the tap. The 6-10 sophomore led the Muskies with 12 on the night and the Blue Devil lead was cut to 2, 18-16. That was as close as Greenup would get though. The alley-oop to Steve Miller for the stuff. He led all scores with 18, and then just before the half, Miller with a power move on the baseline, gets the jam, foul, and converts the three-point play to put the Devils up 34-22 at the break. In the second half, Al Pruitt's club was in complete control. Greg Bates with a hook. He had 13 for the Devils as Henry Clay cruises into tomorrow's quarterfinals with a 71-52 win. Well, I thought they answered the call that, that Greenup County had. I think you're absolutely right. You know, I did not think that we played as well as we're capable on the offensive end. Steve missed more shots than he'd been missing, and we just did not shoot the ball well in a half court. But other than that, I thought we played very well.
We beat an excellent basketball team. There's no question about that. I was proud of these kids. We came in, played the first game. Everybody kind of wrote us off. They said Henry Clay, number one. They, you know, they, they don't look that good. But we built. We played a great game in our second game. We played a greater game here because we're playing a better basketball team. Carlisle County used a sticky defense and patient offense to take the Blue Devils out of their potent run and gun game. Robert Warfield gets the lay-in here, and at the half, the Henry Clay lead was just three, 15 to 12. The two teams played even the entire second half. With just a minute 30 left in regulation, John Tyler scores inside to give the Comets a 29-27 lead. But Steve Miller comes back on the other end to tie it at 29, and the game went to overtime. In the OT, Carlisle controlled the tip and held it for the last shot. Keith York took the jumper, but it wouldn't go, and Jeff Blandon's desperation try the other way was just off the mark, and it went to double overtime. After the two teams exchanged buckets in the second extra period, York shot an air ball with time running out, and another Blandon heave at the buzzer just caught the rim, so it went to a third overtime. In the third extra frame, just a minute and a half left, the score tied at 33, and Carlisle turns it over on a five-second violation. The Devils ran the clock down to nine seconds, called time to set their final play, and Steve Miller's shot at the baseline was long, but Greg Bates was there for the tap, and Al Pruitt captured his first state title, 35 to 33. Their jaw was set, our jaw was set, and something had to give. Luck, Providence, guy upstairs, I don't know, but we'll take it. You've had a lot of big wins, but I would think it's certainly this has to be your biggest. This is the biggest. This is the biggest. These guys said they'd win this for my wife, and I'm proud of them. My alarm went off at 6 o'clock and I had to sit on WVLK and so help me when the alarm went off, here comes a voice saying, and Miller takes the shot, it's off the rim, Bates rebounds, it's in, Henry Clay is the 1983 state champions and I turned over again and kind of pinched myself and then I got up and ran in there and looked to see if the trophy was there, it was hard to, hard to believe, you know, when wake up to that and then the DJ came on and said congratulations to coach Al Pruitt and the Henry Clay Blue Devils who will be having a pep rally at 9.30 today. And that was just great, just simply great. It's, it's indescribable how in 25 years you know you reach for something and it gets away from you and then all of a sudden you, you get a group of guys that says hey we're going to get it and, and they go out and get it. It's, it's a great feeling and we're really pleased with, with these fellas and we're, we're just tickled to death for what's happening. When we first found out she was sick, the whole team got together and decided that they were going to do a little something special. And the only thing we could do, and real special for Coach, was to win the state tournament for him. So that's what we went out and did. Has the, the glow of the moment worn off at all, or has it, has it gotten better? Oh, it'll never wear off. I think it'll all, I think it'll get bigger. You know, I told these fellas when we went on the floor, I said, when first game we played, I said, we can go out there and lose this game, and tomorrow night nobody will ever remember Henry Clay was here. We can go out and win this game and progress through this thing. And I said, even if you get in the finals 10 years from now, they won't remember you unless you win it. And they, they said, we'll win it. And, they, they, you know, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And I'm, I'm just proud of them.